these verses. I want to read first of all in the Gospel of John and chapter number 1. John chapter 1. And I want to begin reading with verse number 11. Talking about the Lord Jesus, it says, He came unto His own, and His own received Him not. But as many as receive Him To them gave he the power to become the sons of God, even them that believe on his name. Notice, they become sons of God. Sons of God. That's a phrase I want you to remember. And Jesus said in John chapter 3, saying, he said this, and I want you to get in mind, marvel not that I said unto you, you must be born again. The idea I want to convey to you is that the way you become a son of God is by birth. By birth. Back in John 1, where we read a moment ago, let me just read another verse or two there. It says, which were born, not of flesh, nor of the will of, the, not of blood, nor of the will of the flesh, nor the will of man, but of God. And then Jesus said in chapter 3, ye must be born again. And then in the book of Romans chapter 8, the apostle Paul says this, for as many as are led by the Spirit, They are the sons of God. So in a moment, I want to preach to you on who am I? Who are you? Who am I? Group will now sing. You may be seated. Yeah. 
folks being lifted out? Praise hey, God, that's good. Don't don't quit. You got to sing that verse again. How many of you are glad you've been lifted out? That means lifted out of the pit of sin, sorrow, death. I want to preach a few Sundays on who am I? Who am I? And I'll reverse the question and ask, who are you? And you ask the question, who am I? Today, who am I? I'm a son of God in God's family. I'm a son of in the family. And the scriptures I read to you tell us how we got in the family. We got in the family by being born again. Born of God into the family. The way you got into the family that you are physically and naturally. You was born into that family. I don't think there's anybody here that was hatched. But I think we all were born. And just like we got into the our natural family by physical birth, we get into the spiritual family by spiritual birth. We're born into the family of God. So I am a son or a child to include both women and men. I am a child in God's family. Hallelujah. That's my position. That's your position. One of the things I believe as a pastor is that God's people don't realize their position in Christ as they should. Man, if we realize what we are and what we have and what we will be because we're in God's family, I want to tell you, it will put fire in our bones, put faith in our heart. It'll put love for the things of God in our spirit. So, first of all, I want to say to you that being in God's family it, it's an experience of life. It is an evidence of love. It is an expression of loyalty. And it is an enhancing of likeness. Now let's look at those four things. First, in John, 1 John chapter 3. 1 John chapter 3, if you want to, Turn there and look with me at this verse. In John, 1 John chapter 3 and verse number 1, he says, Behold what manner of love the Father hath bestowed upon us that we should be called the sons of God. 
Therefore the world knoweth us not, because it knew him not. Beloved, now are we the sons of God, and it doth not yet appear what we shall be. But we know that when he shall appear, we shall be like him, for we shall see him as he is. Every man that hath this hope in him purifieth himself, even as he is pure. It's an experience, a personal experience of life. When you're born to God, God puts his life in you. Saved from death to life. We were dead in trespasses and in sin. And when we're born again, we have the divine life of God in us. And that's personal to every child of God. It is a present life, not just a personal life, but it's a present life. He said, now are we the sons of God. Some folks say, oh, they embrace a religion and then the, when they die, they'll, get the, they'll become a child of God in the, and the, they'll have eternal life. No, the moment you're born again, you're born into eternal life and it's a present life, not now, that you'll get in eternity. It's what you have now goes into eternity. It's everlasting life. And it's a permanent life. We're born of God and it's permanent. It's not that you get born again today and lose it tomorrow. No, sir. It's permanent. God, it's of God. And what God does, He does it forever. It's God's life. It's just as much God's life as anything else. You see, when God created man, and then when man sinned, sin brought spiritual death that separated him from God. But when man's born again, God gives him spiritual life, and that life is eternal. It's permanent. It's forever. So the experience, the experience of being a son of God, having sonship, is that we have life. Notice the evidence of sonship. It's love. John said in 1 John chapter 3 and verse 14, we know that we've passed from death unto life because we love the brethren. Love is the evidence that you pass from death to life. That I've passed from death to life. Now, if you don't love the brethren, you don't, you don't have life. That's pretty plain, but it's true. If we are saved by the grace of God and the life of God is in us, then we have love. Love. You see, just like this life is divine life, this love is divine love. Before God saved us, we didn't love God. We didn't love the saints. We didn't love the sinners. We may have, loved, we may have a, had a natural love. But when you got saved, God's Holy Spirit put in your heart a love. And it's the love of God. He shed abroad the love of God in our hearts when we were saved by the grace of God. Romans 5 and 5 said, The Spirit of God has put into our hearts, shed abroad in our hearts, a love. It's a love for the Savior. It's a love for the saints. It's a love for sinners. You'll love sinners if you have the love of God in your heart. And that, that, is, that's, that is the evidence, the evidence that the best evidence you can have that you're right with God is that you have the love of God in your heart. You have the love of God in your heart. And then there is the expression of sonship, and that's loyalty. God expects his children to be loyal, to be faithful. We're to be faithful to God's word. 
We're to be faithful in God's worship. We're to be faithful in God's work. A lot of people look at the church as having the, the elders or deacons and the preacher and others that are the leaders are the workers. No, we're all workers. God gives us all certain gifts. And we're to exercise those gifts in the family of God, in the church. We're to be loyal and faithful to the things of God. We're living in a very difficult time, frustrating time. For God's, well, God's people, I suppose, you get frustrated, but especially to the pastors of the churches. Pastors are going through a difficult, stressful time. What do we do? What, when do we have a church? And all of this kind of stuff. In addition to that, a lot of folks just got unfaithful to the things of God. Just unfaithful. You don't know to, to, to who to depend on. I want to tell you, I want to say this to, to this crowd that's here today, with, with the except, no exception. I look out, and I know who's here, and we have a few that can't be here because of sickness and things. I understand that. But I want to commend you for your faithfulness. I want to commend you. Look out, and I see you where you sit, Brother Robin sits over and literally sit here, and these folks are on that. They own that second bench right there. You better not never get on that bench. You just all over the church, I, it, you know. Thank God for your loyalty. Thank God for being faithful. It's not just being faithful to a preacher or a church or a steeple. It's being faithful to Jesus. The stewards always sit back there on that seat, sit there like a, a model family. Praise God. Hey, man, I get to bragging on you and give you the big head shows sure the world. But loyalty, faithful, being faithful to God and to God's word and to God's worship, that's what's important, the worship of God. We come to God's house to worship God, to show God respect and show God reverence and show God our concern. Thank God for the loyalty. Jesus said he would be able to say to some, Well done, thou good and faithful servant. You've been faithful over a few things, and I'll make you ruler over many things. Being just faithful. Being faithful to the Lord. And then there's another thing. <coughs> sonship. The enhancement of sonship. In 1 John 3 where I read it, it says, Behold what manner of love the Father hath bestowed upon us. There's that love. That we should be called the sons of God. That's life. That's life. And it, it, it said... Now are we the sons of God, right now. But it don't appear what we shall be yet. In other words, there's some more to come. But when we see him, we will be like him. For we shall see him as he is. And every person that has this hope in him purifieth himself, even as he is pure. We take on the likeness of Christ. That's what he's saying. That's the ultimate end. That's the ultimate consummation of salvation is when we're made like Jesus. And that started when we got saved, and it goes on every day. Paul gives us a verse about that. He said it in 2 Corinthians. Paul says this about it. 2 Corinthians, I think I marked it here. He says, let me find it. Here it is. In 2 Corinthians, Paul said, in chapter 3, I believe it is. Here it is. Listen, listen to this. 2 Corinthians 
chapter 3 and verse 17. Now the Lord is that Spirit. Where the Spirit of the Lord is, there is liberty. And then the next verse. But we all, with an open face, beholding as in a glass, what do we ho- behold? The glory of the Lord. That's Jesus. The glory of the Lord. We are changed into the same image from glory to glory, even by the Spirit of the Lord. When we look into the perfect law of liberty, the Word of God, and take this Word of God, and the Holy Spirit applies it to our hearts, and we apply it to our lives, we're changed, being changed day by day into the image of the Lord Jesus. And then when He comes, He'll consummate that by changing this body. But our spirits and our souls are being changed. Our minds are being changed. Paul says in Romans chapter 12 that we're to present our bodies a living sacrifice, holy and acceptable unto God, which is our reasonable service, and be not conformed to this world, but be ye transformed by the renewing of your mind. We're to be renewed and renewed and more and more made like Jesus. And ultimately, our likeness will be like the Son of God. I am the Son of God. I don't have many relatives left in the flesh. I have three nieces and a few cousins on both sides of the family. They're all gone but me. That's the only one that lived right, I reckon. I don't have a thing to do with it. But uh, they keep saying, my, that my nieces, they say, you just like your daddy. That's a compliment. That's a compliment. She, she knew my daddy. You say, I get more and more like my daddy. Walk like him, talk like him, act like him. That's a compliment. I look back there and see the Stuarts. Did you know you got a shirt on just like your daddy's got one? What'd you do, get in his wardrobe this morning? <laughs> likeness, likeness, likeness. We're going to be like Jesus. Thank God. Thank God for the privilege of being a son of God and being in God's family. Oh, we're somebody. We're the family of God. There's a song, the family of God. We are in the family of God. What a blessing to be in God's family. Amen. Our Father, we love you. We call you our Father. The Holy Spirit in our hearts helps us to say, Abba, Father. You are our Father. Hallelujah. We're your sons. We're your children. We're in your family. And Lord, we want to act like a family. The family of God. We want to so live and so conduct ourselves that people will know that we're part of the family of God. Bless this church and its membership and these precious folks that's here today. God bless every one of them and their families. We pray for those of our fellowship who are sick. You'll touch them. You'll encourage their loved ones and friends. Thou art God and you're able to do exceedingly abundantly above all we could ever ask or think. And we ask you today to touch these dear people for Jesus' sake. Not for our sake, but for Jesus' sake. And Lord, we'll praise you and we'll thank you. We pray with thanksgiving in Jesus' name. Amen.